Hello and welcome back to Nibblecast with your host Nibbleoski, bringing you a rather new type of video, as it were. Uh, I know it has been a little while, as as always, uh, but the reason for that is I've moved into a uh, a new place and it's taken a little bit of time to sort of get up and running. But I am back. You may have noticed in the background, though, uh, it's uh, it's not uh, Forged Alliance um, for once. <laughs> um, instead, it is a company of heroes skin. Now the reason I'm actually going to be shoutcasting this game today uh, is because um, I don't always play Forge Alliance and I do indulge in other games as well. Recently I have enjoyed uh, playing a bit of Company of Heroes. So very uncharacteristically I'm actually going to be shoutcasting my, uh, my, own, my own game, believe it or not. Um, but I thought it was such a good game and I enjoy playing it so much. Um, both sides were absolutely excellent. So I thought that I would uh, show you a bit of Company of Heroes and uh, obviously you've like the video, we'll see if we can do some more, but uh, if we get underway, as you can see it's clearly playback, so I'm not actually playing this uh, as we're, we're going along, uh, but if we look at the mini-map down here, <laughs> Forge Alliance style, we'll call the uh, opposite team Team 1 up here, and uh, Team 2 down here. Now, as I said previously, uh, this is a game where I am included, so I am playing the left-hand side Wehrmacht player, and over here, joining me is a, uh, a really good friend, uh, it's actually Jig Beans, and uh, he's also taken Wehrmacht. Uh, what you may notice about us uh, both, if I actually slow this down just a little bit, uh, is the fact that we, uh, on this particular map, uh, road to uh, Montaume, um, I can't really do the French pronunciation of it, uh, but we do have two pretty much identical uh, strategies, which uh, probably would forewarn people who are uh, going to play against us at this game at some point, but never mind, we're given away the tricks of the trade. Anyway, popping over to the uh, the allied side over here, we have Mr. Random Chaos, and uh, he has decided to go uh, American. Uh, no colours in this, actually, because of the way the replays work, um, and where the Company of Heroes works is that you are blue, your allies are yellow, and everybody else is uh, is red, so it's a pretty black and white world, uh, Company of Heroes. There is no grey area. And joining him on this side is Flagator. Flagator? Fl oh no, do you know what? I've just realised. FL Gator. We're going to call him Gator because Florida, I can only assume, is where he's from. Uh, I could be wrong, but uh, hey-ho. Anyway, let's bring ourselves back up to speed and actually look at what uh, what's going on, what the strategies are, and what everybody is doing. Now, uh, if you look actually down here at the uh, the mini-map, uh, uninterestingly, engineers capping at the moment, uh, but uh, these are two polarizing different strategies. And the way the Company of Heroes works is a little bit different to... to uh, uh, some other strategy games, um, in the sense that you've got to really have everything connected. Uh, so, for example, if you take the stuff in the middle, uh, it's not going to actually grant you any kind of uh, resource bonus because it's not connected through the line, much like a real war zone. Um, so, two sort of opposing different strategies we've got going on here at the moment. We'll notice that, uh, and I sort of speak about myself in the third person because um, as weird as that sounds, I don't like calling myself me as I'm shoutcasting. But in any case, um, Nibelowski and Beans have decided to grab the two. Uh, fuel points, uh, the two medium fuel points in the centre of the map, uh, unconnected. But what this will do is it will grab them and they'll be able to pull troops up quickly uh, to defend this area, but they will lose out on the resource bonus. A little further behind, however, is uh, Gator and Chaos, who have decided actually to link all of their territories uh, straight away with uh, quite a number of advancing troops. Uh, so moving over to Beans' side at the moment, we do have two engineer squads. Uh, slowly approaching, and one engineer squad has got that already covered off by. <laughs> uh, you see, the thing is, when you're playing a game, you, you tend to miss a lot of things. Uh, Beans repositioning his hem chief a little unnecessarily. I don't think the engineer squad's going to quite make it. No, it's not. Um, we do have a flanking engineer squad down here as well. Uh, when a um, unit is capping in Company of Heroes, it uh, effectively goes into negative cover. Over on the other side as well, we have the uh, sort of a crossfire MG. That's MG42. 1,200 rounds, uh, I think, capacity on those things back in the Second World War. Uh, happily chugging out uh, a good bit of covering fire, and uh, it looks as if Beans, yes, and uh, Nibelowski are starting to connect all of their territories now, which uh, they're not going to get any of the benefit of that fuel unless they do. 
Uh, it looks like Gator has decided that uh, to surpass the MG, which is currently covering the left-hand flank, they are going to completely surpass. He's now bringing up two engineer squads and a rifleman squad uh, to take on this Volk squad down here. Uh, Beans deciding is actually quite a lot of movement. He's got two Volk squads coming in to, uh, to cover them off. Uh, the Volk's grenadiers, on the whole, aren't spectacular troops, but they do get the bulk of the work done, certainly early on, much like the US Riflemen. And it looks uh, as though that was, probably was a bit of a, a hearty gamble. Uh, Beans coming in there and knocking out their flank. He's going to have to withdraw, as he does do with the Riflemen there, but uh, Chaos, I'm not sure whether that uh, engineer's going <laughs> to survive. survive the day. Um, and another MG squad being brought up by uh, Nevaloski as well. Um, I've actually seen one of these things. Uh, I went down to the tank museum in Bovington. Uh, if you haven't gone before, it's absolutely incredible. Lots of World War II tanks. Uh, but there is a Schrimmwagen, or a... Uh, there's a Schrimmwagen, or uh, another one, but there's a, a very small little German craft. It's very neat, as well as uh, many interesting tanks there. A rush for the centre going on now. And Beans managing to take the house before the Rifleman squad can get in there. You'll notice as well that the squad is downhill, it's in green cover. Um, the Rifleman squad being brought up by Gator trying to flank, but it's still absolutely no cover whatsoever. And that MG squad's going to be put into the opposite house. Just for knocking into the microphone. It doesn't really seem as if, at the moment, uh, either American player seems to have a uh, strategy. I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm trying to scratch my nose. <laughs> I'm knocking into my own headphones uh, uh, microphone. Uh, instead, trying to cover off the northern sector of their uh, right-hand flank, or it would be left-hand flank, I suppose, in their perspective. Uh, Chaos trying to put in an MG squad. Have beat Nivoloski spotted it. Well, Nivoloski certainly had spotted it. And a uh, five-man rifle squad as well coming up, unfortunately losing. It's quite a manpower commitment early on in the game to put down MG Nest. And uh, actually, for newer players of the Company of Heroes, should you ever be interested in playing it, uh, they, they, they're great MG Nests, but don't think they're going to close off an area. They're not great, especially the, uh, the American ones and the Wehrmacht ones are uh, pretty poor. Incredible range on the MG from the house in the center as well, covering off both sides of the flanks. And it seems to be a bit of a recipe for disaster for both American players at the moment, finding that both of their squads are getting pinned. You're not going to want to march that jeep into that MG fire either. I think he's more concerned about getting the Schwimmwagen then. And a cheeky unit up here. Uh, I don't know where that came from. Taking out Beans' MG. He's going to have to try and sort uh, sort that out, because the fuel points really are the life, soul and blood of the uh, Wehrmacht side. The Americans don't tend to uh, place so much emphasis on fuel rather than manpower, um, especially in the early game as well. But as it were, Beans and Nivoloski at the moment probably holding the initiative, having taken just over half the map. And that Rifleman squad, that Shrimpark is not going to make it home. And those Rifleman squads have actually now been upgraded. Uh, Gators decided to throw the uh, the BARs, uh, BAR upgrade on them, which, as, as it were, talking about fuel, actually does cost the 60 fuel to get them upgraded, but does give them a huge advantage. Uh, Nibolowski bringing an MG over at the moment, which is going to be shortly flanked. And actually a lot of troops coming from the centre here, including a sniper, but I'm not really sure that's going to be a great idea. Uh, with that many BAR squads, uh, that MG is running for its life. And another sniper there as well. Um, there's a lot of high priority units here. And a little bit of organisation and a great flanking manoeuvre uh, from Gator taking out that MG. Uh, Nibolowski bringing over his motorcycle, which isn't going to be particularly useful. Is that sniper going to survive? I'm pretty sure in the real world, I don't think he would have, but uh, he's obviously uh, been in... <laughs> uh, a good bit of training to manage to uh, run for that long. A jeep covering off the fuel point to the rear. It's actually a low fuel point there. And actually, Nebolowski losing on this side to Gator the uh, medium munitions point uh, just over the other side. Uh, 
a great idea here from uh, Gator just moving further towards Beans' base. He's actually decapping um, the strategic point, which if you will look down here, uh, will be just a little bit of a hindrance. Um, if they're clever and take this one here as well, it does effectively knock out the munitions point. I've uh, been throwing down the MP40 upgrade. And a sniper in uh, in the forest as well, <laughs> offering some covering fire. A huge amount of troops, quite a few beat up squads here. Uh, one of them actually managed to get a bit of veteran, so it'd be better if uh, Gator were to bring him back. Uh, bring him back, bring them back. Um, a Sturm Armoury going up from. Is it. Looks. No, it's not Beans. It's Nivoloski bringing up a Sturm Armoury. He's actually got a couple of armoured cars on the way at the moment. Um, if I switch over to the other side, uh, can we see what's being produced? I don't know whether we can. Uh, got sticky bombs on the way in anticipation for the German armour. Let's switch back over to myself. And uh, Beans and Nibolowski still holding the uh, the centre. As irony would have it, uh, you would have thought this would be the most pivotal point uh, on the map, but actually it really isn't that important uh, at all. That HQ looking to be decapped by Gator as well, with the troops moving down the side. Uh, what's being reinforced? A Flamer engineer squad. Looking pretty ropey in the centre for both teams. Nibolowski throwing in what he can. There's a grenade going in there. He needs to move, otherwise he's going to lose. And he does lose the motorcycle on the right-hand side and a shift in momentum. Uh, certainly not in the middle. That engineer squad just about saving the day and finishing off the remnants of the, the centre. Uh, but over here, Chaos looking to absolutely hunker and bolster this uh, fuel point with a couple of MG positions. You've got an armoured car from Nibolowski. That's going to try and take down that pesky jeep. It has to be said, I do think the uh, the American machine gun doesn't ever sound as good as the MG42 in this. And the two Volk squads coming up. That's a huge wipeout of a squad there. Uh... It would be an idea now for Nivoloski to bring that armor car up and start harassing these MG points, reclaiming what is uh, what was originally theirs. Uh, decapping the munitions point from Gator there. A uh, huge amount of four infantry squads, BAR, one veterancy actually on the rifleman squad. Um, that's 24 men there, that's a huge amount of manpower. Those armoured cars, uh, one of them at least, has been pulled over to the right-hand flank. Getting rid of one of the MGs, but uh, nothing more than that. And my texture's <laughs> warping a little bit there. It has been really quite hot in the UK over the past few days. And that should be more than an adequate amount of troops to take back the munitions point. Surprisingly, having not brought the MG forward, it's just still covering the field point down there. It would negate an advantage bringing it through. And those armoured cars being brought back in relation to the huge threat coming in from those four infantry squads. They do have sticky bombs on them, but being suppressed by the machine gun, they're not going to be able to get in reach. The sticky bombs, of course, uh, if you remember, I'm going to have to open the window in this room, so apologies for any other intrusive noises in my squeaky chair, but it would appear my computer is starting to tear the graphics, which isn't so good. Hopefully it will uh, it'll stop momentarily. The armoured car, great thing about it, a bit of micro, you will be able to uh, pin troops. And that Puma probably doesn't want to go too much further in sticky bomb range. There is, from what I can hear, a Stug out. And the Americans bringing back their troops. Got a healing station at the back there as well. And now that armoured car really does need to be put to work over here. Nibolowski were to get rid of these two MG points, it would allow Beans to bring forward all these troops. Beans actually having pushed out a Stormtrooper unit, 
with the Panda Shrek on uh, one of their shoulders, just in anticipation, maybe just in case the Americans have brought out some kind of armour, it doesn't look as if they have, they've actually built a tank depot. So he's actually uh, gone straight for uh, for tanks. And while we're waiting, got a bit of action coming here in the middle. One rifleman squad from Gator being pinned down again by that armoured car. They keep an eye on this group here as well, four infantry squads, and uh, a Stug which isn't going to do particularly well against them, and the armoured car on the left hand side there. But if we just slow things down just for a moment and check what is going on, so I don't know whether I can see company commander stuff, uh, let's have a look. No, that's a little int No, you can't unfortunately see what doctrines they've decided to go for, so we're just going to have to wait and see what's brought on to the field. <laughs> and that armor car needs to run quickly. Of course, he does know, Gator, that there's an MG covering that field point. And another bank of uh, rank of retrancy for the Rifleman squad at the front there. MG pinning them. He's trying to, I think what he's trying to do is he's trying to bring around those Rifleman squads. He's got to be careful, Nivoloski, if he's to retain this position. Because if that MG goes down, he will lose the momentum on this left-hand flank. Those Rifleman squads do look pretty pinned. He's brought the armoured car around just in anticipation and they do retreat. Bean's actually bringing back quite a number of his units up here as well. Huge amount of riflemen on the field. Another four squads from Chaos. And that machine gun emplacement ticking away happily on the left-hand side. I'm going to speed this up a little bit to, uh, to plus two as everything settles down. So scores on the doors at the moment really looking strong for the American side with four infantry squads on the uh, right hand flank and uh, certainly another four infantry squads at the back here it doesn't look as if they've really put more much more thought into uh, using other things so far that tank depot hasn't really produced anything of any concern Nivoloski uh, bringing up his puma and pumas I should say rather to try and seize the initiative on the left flank, that uh, engineer unit taking back the munitions, whilst the rifleman squad here takes the uh, adjacent. I say adjacent. It looks adjacent. Yeah, pretty much on the on the map, just on the other side. Those pumas have engaged that rifleman squad. Interestingly, though, inside of there, there are some airborne units with the anti-tank gun upgrade, so he's got to be careful Nibelowski where he's taking those pumas just in case he gets caught out. It would be advisable actually if Gator were to split his troops and cut off the escape. And another good hit and a miss <laughs> from the anti-air capabilities. Beans looking as if he is pushing back. Oh wow, huge explosion. I don't know what on earth caused that. And the Rifleman squad's being brought back once again. They've got a uh, HQ in the centre here. And is that an anti-tank gun? Yes it is. The anti-tank guns in this game have a uh, quite a significant range advantage and uh, a great line of sight as well. So if you do have a tank on the field they usually get caught by the anti-tank gun uh, before it's realised. In fact, actually, if we flip over, I believe this is Gator, if we just go over and look at the fog of war. This is what he is able to see at the moment. Is he going to bring the anti-tank gun up? He's got his troops ready to push into the flank. <laughs> and Bean's taking that by storm at the moment with chaos all of his troops are at the back and the advance it's always like a, a yin and a yang at the moment on both flanks when one's attacking one's defending Nibelowski's gonna have to be looking to defend as once again the graphics is scarring and that is a stew which will play well it takes out troops pretty effectively that anti-tank gun is going to be needing uh, to be brought up it definitely has line of sight on them 
uh, MG at the moment. If I take away the fog of war just to be able to see what's going on, there's a huge amount of armour at the back there. And those troops are all pinned. Anti tank gun missing his first shot. The Puma really inadvisedly moving up at the moment. It's going to take actually damage from the stew. The two Pumas are pinning it down. And the momentum certainly has shifted quite comprehensively towards. Oh my god! Uh, towards the Axis powers. Uh, two German players. Uh, there is a Sherman out. Uh, it's a bit a little risky going up against that many. Rock's going to. Grenadier squads. With their Panzerfausts and Panzer Shreks. And a grenade being brought up. He does have the four infantry squads bringing up the rear, which actually is really well advised. He's got a force beans to bring back all of those troops. Nibolowski bringing forward his huge armoured division, uh, including uh, one of the guiltiest pleasures, I have to say, is the Ostwind. Airborne unit's not going to be able to do much with that anti-tank is effectively being brought back. I have to say Gator has actually been incredibly good uh, from the very beginning at uh, micromanaging his troops. It would be advised though sort of splitting them up and trying to make different flanks, different ways to get through. There does seem to be a bit of a uh, front line emerging here. Sort of split halfway across. Beans bringing up a Panther. Huge play by Beans. Absolutely massive. If Nibolowski's not careful, you see the range of that anti-tank gun is well in excess. He's got veterancy on that stew at the moment. I'm um, assuming, yeah, he's gone for the... the Wehrmacht quarters? I can't ever remember what the upgrade system is called. The huge range of that anti-aircraft is going to bring it back. He's going to have to force retreat. The infantry, once again, is incredibly manpower intensive. And Nibolowski taking the munitions point with his engineer squads. It looks fairly desperate at the moment for, certainly I would say, Gator. The anti-tank gun going down to the Ostwind and the Puma. <laughs> it all starts again. It does seem to be fairly academic at the moment. They're wanting to get rid of uh, that Ostwind, the anti-tank gun. I assume it's ground firing at the moment. The great thing about this as opposed to Fortune Alliance as well is the fact that you can reclaim things. Uh, not in the sense that it literally zaps it into uh, raw energy, but uh, you can retake uh, guns and so forth. Uh, so to make sure that he doesn't have that. He is bringing his troops around the flank. He has decided to do something different. That Sherman being brought across here. The only effective weapon in that group is going to be the Stug. And actually he's he's brought Nibolowski in quite effectively. Because he, what he hasn't noticed is all of the troops. Who are now on a boost at the moment. That does look as if the Ostwind is going to go down. Unfortunately it does go down. A uh, huge amount of veterancy going on, both airborne troops and uh, that Sherman really needs to push up on that Stug. Uh, the Stug is, for me, one of the best uh, choices in the game in terms of tank. Um, it's limited, really, by the fact that it can't rotate its turret because it's just effectively an anti-tank gun. Um, but the amount of hammering it can take is, is incredible for a tank of its class. If we shift back over to look at the perspective from an opposite point of view, Beans at the moment, quite tentatively, interestingly, he's got the Panther theory, he might as well start bringing it up, it's not a great deal going on. Once again, the Allies are sort of on the back foot, I'm not really sure why there's not a lot of pushing. If any of you have ever seen my Forged Alliance uh, video, Top 10 Tips, uh, one of the tips I actually give into it is the fact that you need to know when to attack, and if I'm honest, this is a classic, classic case of uh, both players on the Axis forces. They have absolutely a tremendous amount of stuff, and uh, you know they can exploit bringing them through here all the way around, and maybe putting pressure on this side of the base and pinning, and uh, there's nothing all the way. There's a HQ there, there's an MG there. And uh, yeah, there's a Sherman at the back, but that's really it. There is nothing stopping Beans from pushing all the way. He really needs to bring all of his squads forward to surround that HQ. You need to push the initiative when you have it. Or you're just going to lend yourself to uh, have any issues in the future. The anti-tanker has been reclaimed. Uh, not sure whether it's the same one as before. 
I don't really remember whether that one got destroyed or not. But certainly, again, looks as if the Axis Power is a Panther 4 coming out. Panther 4? Panzer 4? Great little tank. 75mm cannon, I think, on that. Certainly not as impressive as the Tiger, but uh, a cracking little tank nonetheless. Just a bit of repair work going on is a lull in the battle. So if we take account of really what's on both front lines, we do have a Stug, a Stew, which although they look in pretty much exactly the same, the difference you can tell is the fact that the Stew has a slightly thicker cannon on the end, whereas the Stug has a slightly thinner, more pointy uh, cannon is generally the difference. Uh, the Stug used for anti-tank, uh, Stew used for anti-infantry. Stew incredibly uh, good at taking and finally, Beans does press on and start taking the fuel points from random chaos. It seems as if the Allies are uh, licking their wounds a little bit at the moment and slowly but surely reinforcing. You can hear the airborne aircraft going up, up above. As you take in the air, he's slowly but surely and finally taking that machine gun emplacement. He's got a good triple veterancy on both of them. And the great thing about the Axis is the fact that you can't buy veterancy. Which, whether you want to say that's fair or not, God only knows. A huge push on the left hand side here. That is uh, three airborne squads followed by three infantry squads. That MG really does need to go down as soon as possible. The Stu taking out a huge amount in the centre. Uh, he's got to be careful he doesn't get caught out. Another MG squad being brought up and that entire, once again, infantry blob. <coughs> Oh, excuse me. Probably going to sneeze. <coughs> there we go, twice in a row. I don't know whether anybody else has felt like this, but uh, you, uh, when you have allergies and problems, you can't ever sneeze once. You've got to sneeze three, four, seven, twelve times in a row, just to make sure you know you, you're covered. Which is uh, never pleasant. The anti tank gun being brought down by Flagler and. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Panther's frontal armor, although it has taken a, a little chunk of health out of it to be able to take that kind of a hit. It's pretty remarkable and it does seem as if. Uh, gotta be careful here. It does look as though that Sherman has got the tank, uh, the cannon upgrade on it as well. The engineer's repairing that. Beans has got to be careful, he's not going to lose his Panther there. Uh, at the other side as well, there's another anti tank gun hitting that stew. Is it going to take it out? No, he's not going to take out the anti tank gun. No, he's bringing forward uh, Nebuloski with a Panther now as well. It does look as if the initiative's been brought. Uh, that, foolishly losing that Panther should have been really brought it back. The anti tank gun is still going. Probably the most equally balanced of the tanks, the Sherman against the Panzer IV, but with that anti-tank gun in the back there, Beans threatens to lose that Panzer IV, despite the huge amount of veterancy on it. They keep an eye on the left flank down here, it does seem as if Nivelowski has once again pushed that blob of infantry back, and that Panzer IV, really pretty wasteful, it is unfortunately going to go down. Some of you might be wondering, well why hasn't uh, Beans brought forward his troops uh, to deal with that anti-tank gun? And actually, I was going to say there's an MG position there, but <laughs> it's really not. The only MG position is down there. Uh, so we'll retreat there, and that Sherman with two veterancy points on it is now going to hold firm. And a Pershing being brought onto the field. M26 joining its uh, brother in arms. Absolutely love the look of the Pershing tank. Uh, for those of you yet who don't know, once again, uh, the Pershing is pretty much the top ally tank you can get in the game. Uh, it's one of the ones that can face off against the Panther uh, pretty seamlessly. Uh, huge, massive cannon on it. Uh, historically speaking, actually, the Pershing didn't really get a, a look uh, into the Second World War. Um, it, uh, it was only used, to be honest with you, right at the end, and uh, was used, was kept in service for a little while afterwards, but the Patton tank sort of took away the uh, helm as one of the most effective American tanks afterwards. And Nibelowski really not pushing forward at all, I'm not too sure. We keep an eye on the right hand flank, that Pershing is going to throw up an alarm bell. Do have something coming up as another Ostwind from the left hand side, and there is 
literally nothing and this is a classic case building bunkers instead of pushing forward there is nothing left on this left flank the entire base is empty uh, and if we were to put back on the fog of war of course you can't see the fact that there's there's nothing there there is absolutely nothing there but uh, there we are so uh, it doesn't matter whether you give the advice sometimes you just don't take it uh, that entire left flank now is uh, open for business, but still nothing. Another Sherman coming up to reinforce. Possibly, is that the same Sherman? It might be the same Sherman, actually. Is that the double veterancy one? No, it's not. So where's that other Sherman? Then? There's this anti-tank gun down there. There's a few points being taken here back as well to sort of shift that halfway diagonal point. I might speed this up just a little bit. It does appear as if something is being brought over, and Ostwind, interestingly, being brought over, probably to deal with the infantry squad over there. We'll bring it back down again. Now, this is where it, I think, is going to start getting interesting. We have a Sherman and a Pershing drawing against the both Veteran C3, Tiger, and Panther facing off across the field. That airborne squad is going to try and take. Uh, actually, <laughs> the uh, the Sherman's abandoning uh, with a tiger and a, and a panther over the other side. I can't really recommend that. Uh, MG squad, incredible range, has decided to uh, try and pin those infantry squads. Uh, looks as though that uh, Sherman's over there is probably going to try and take off that Ostwin, which is now retreating. So see the lack of power it has against it, but. Panther just doing nothing. In fact, actually, that Pershing doing a huge amount of damage, and both the Tiger and the uh, Panther doing next to nothing. Consider it's a two on one, and the amount of damage that Tiger has taken. He's getting flanked by the airborne squad, so he's going to have to bring it back. And that Tiger is not going to see the light of day unless he brings it back. The rear arm is getting hit by the infantry squad, which are just. <laughs> Uh, I don't know whether that's just bravery or stupid running under the tracks. The Tiger does go down a huge amount of veterancy to the squad there. And uh, is the Panther going to be able to deal with it? Um, the finally is the push of uh, up the left hand flank here. And the Panther as well being brought up. And did the Pershing survive? I don't think it did. Sorry for switching, that was a bit of a silly move. Uh, but the Pershing's not back, however, it is straight back onto the field with two brand spanking new and improved Shermans as well. Nivolowski finally pushing up to the base, uh, maybe a little foolishly because he's, <laughs> oh god, uh, huge, there's anti-tank gun, there's sticky bombs, there's rockets, that Panther's not going to be able to take too much punishment, the Oswind's just overcooked it completely. I mean, the veteran C3 Oswind is going to do great things, he's just going to try and ram them down. Uh, but the Pershing and the Sherman's being healed as well, he's actually gone for the tank doctrine. The rear armor being hit, he has got the Panther up as well. But, uh, that stew is not going to survive an attack from something like the Pershing. And it is now being retreated. <laughs> a massive, massive hit, and it's not a stew actually, it is a stug. But, uh, that is not going to come back to the fatherland. is just laying on the the flaming wreckage oh the realities of war might have to put in uh, age restricted video on for the horrors that you are uh, <laughs> you're witnessing but once again another MG squad has been put up in this little base here a bit of chat going on at the moment There is chat going on between the two allies. A tiger and a panther waiting again on this left-hand flank of Nivolowski. He's bringing up the Persian too. 
But the great thing about the tank doctrine is the fact that it doesn't really matter if you sacrifice too many tanks and if you've got the munitions uh, to be able to afford it, you can just keep on recycling your tanks. Uh, Pershing exposing its rear armour, I can't really advise. Especially with a the Tiger there as well. He's got the troops and the anti-tank gun bringing up the rear. And repairs going on the Pershing at the moment. The problem Nibelowski is finding, he hasn't really... Uh, I suppose actually he has got the MGs there supporting. And a, a wonder shot taken from the Gators infantry. Is it going to bring them back? The great thing about it is his veterancy is, is superb. The Pershing staying up as well. Really think it's going to be able to face off. Oh, I really do miss the Supreme Commander control thing to be able to zoom out that a little bit further. Is he going to try and recycle that? Has he got the ability? The Tiger's pressing. The main gun destroyed on that Pershing. He's, there's nothing more he can do about it. The Tiger is going to pursue. He's got the anti tank gun there and 24 XP given. And once again, we kind of are back to, well, not square one for the Allies, but they are hanging in there. If somebody were to uh, run down an analysis on this particular game. That's another Pershing. Uh, they probably say that actually the opportunity, as much as I hate to say it, was really with Nibelowski. Um, Puma being brought up to scout, he's probably going to try and get rid of that anti-tank gun. Uh, but with another one just behind it, it's not going to be a great idea. As you can see, both anti-tank guns shifting their positions. Oof half health taken, it's not particularly heavy armour, there's another Sherman being completed with a 50 caliber machine gun popping on the top of that thing both sides licking their wounds at the moment yeah, a few more reinforcements uh, Beans bringing up his Volks Grenadier squads to reinforce his armour on the front here once again, just a little lack of an initiative. There's not a great deal. I could push forward here, sort of put a little more pressure on, um, but it does seem as if both sides are going to push up Nibelowski's flank. They probably sense an opportunity here with only a single Tiger holding down the fort. What's being brought up here is another bloody Ostwald. <laughs> just because you like a tank doesn't necessarily mean it's the right one for the job. The Tiger's now going to have to deal with two upgraded Shermans and the Pershing as well. And those MG squads are not going to last. Both bunkers have been taken down. And the damage engine will mean that that will be an easy, easy tank to flank. Nibelowski realizing that the Oswin really needs to exit stage right. The main gun destroyed on that Tiger, the Pershing, really pushing nicely. It does seem as if Beans, if you keep your eye on the right hand side here, decided he's got to try and push into the main base. Anti-tank gun just holding the fort back here. And a... Oh God, another Ostwind coming up. I'm not sure that's going to be the uh, the gun of choice. Uh, three tanks here, but a base in peril. And that tank depot is looking as if it's probably going to go down. He's going to have to bring it back. His tank's random chaos. And those Ostwinds are Nipoloski moving up. An engineer unit right in the mix of things there, repairing that panther. Trying to get rid of that tank depot as quickly as possible to ensure that no more armour can come through. Three tanks, all pretty healthy looking as well. High veterancy on the Sherman there. It's an anti-tank gun. Looking to encircle the Axis troops. He has taken down that tank depot. He does need to bring all of those troops back, or at least self-right the uh, tanks to face into the wind. The explosive power of that Pershing taking a huge hit there from the Tiger. Unfortunately, the Panzer Shrek's not doing a great uh, amount of damage, and that Pershing really hanging on by a thread. And Tiger's getting repaired by the engineer squad at the back. The Pershing biting the dust there. But he has got another one straight away. He's managing his manpower, meaning that that Tiger is going to go down. Ostwin hammering away on the HQ there. That Pershing's basically cut off that Panther. And he's got the recycled ability on it, meaning that that Sherman will be instantaneously replaced. It's one of the greatest things about the endgame for the Allies and the Tank Commander um, 
I was going to say perk, Doctrine, uh, is the fact that you get it back straight away, and that Sherman's already veteran team on the armour trying to escape, which was the Panther here. Ostwind desperately trying to take down the headquarters. Um, got another Tiger here coming up from Nibaloski straight away, two anti-tank guns which uh, really should be taken care of. They're going to be rotated. He has seen the threat, so Nowalowski needs to bring up the Tiger. The thing is, he is going to be in isolation with two Shermans and a Pershing. Calliope upgrade is available, but uh, probably not the best tank of choice right at this minute. And really not a great deal of munitions to uh, sort of rely on. Ah. And that Tiger is now facing off against the might of the Allied Arsenal, which is the two Shermans and the Pershing. If you fancy at the end, by the way, counting how many times I say Pershing, would be my guest, because I am aware that I have said it a hell of a lot. <laughs> and it does appear as if, if you're looking on the map, the Allies are actually very smartly taking a huge amount of territory. Beans is Licking his wounds in his base back here. He's got the Blitzkrieg uh, ability activated, but with that many, he's got the anti tank gun and two Shermans and a Pershing pushing up. Oh, don't turn your armor. Oh, dear. The damage engine, there is no way that is going to be coming back. And I think this might be another Tiger going the way of the dinosaur. That engine is smoking pretty badly. Tanky little things. Tigers. But without a gun and an engine, effectively is a, a sandwich box just ready to be crushed. Beans are uh, quite a large amount of Volks. It's a uh, high veterancy on them, but really it's the stormtroopers that need to be used. Uh, Vox Grenadiers kind of not, not become useless late game, but. Uh, they're not as, uh, not as effective. I suppose with Veteran Sion they do have their uh, usability, is that a word? I'm not sure whether it is. And that Engineer Squad being brought back, but if you look down here at the map, a huge amount of territory conceded, and it does look as if the shift of momentum is definitely, definitely gone towards the Allied side. I'm going to actually have to speed this up a little bit, so we are into the 41st minute of this game, and my legs... I normally sit on my legs when I'm uh, doing these shout casts. There's a panther, clearly at speed, <laughs> going over the speed limit. I usually sit on my legs when I make these casts, so uh, they are a little dead at the moment. <laughs> and uh, the right hand flank being retaken. But, 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 whilst this is happening, a panther and a stew with a very high veterancy airborne division. I should say squad more than division. Being ranged by that stew, but the great thing about the airborne is they can be reinforced absolutely anywhere on the map. He's trying to get off a shot from that uh, anti-air gun. It's got to be careful because the cannon he ran for so long. There's a panther up here at the moment, which isn't doing a great deal. Probably should be used to try and kill this off. It's going to have to repair that stew. It's just not looking in particularly great shape at the moment. Uh, Beans just reconnecting the Axis territories. There are a couple of cheeky squads down here, once again, trying to take. I mean, this is the thing with grabbing resources. You can't just sit in your base. You have to make sure you maintain your front line as best you can. Allies coming back out of their base with two fully healed Shermans. To make a huge push. A uh, Panzer IV and a Panther here. What have we got down here? Another Panther. Two Panthers, uh, actually, and a Stew. But the real party is going to be happening here over on Beans' right flank up against Random Chaos. Panzer IV is going to find itself, unfortunately, in the midst of uh, quite a high-velocity gun coming from the back. And that is destroyed. Sacrificed a Sherman 
in the running. And unfortunately that Stormtrooper squad no longer has its uh, Panzer Shrek, so it is going to lose out. There's one isolated up here as well as a Volk squad that's just gone down. Two against one is never any good odds. Beans bringing back his Panther, he's positioning its rear so it isn't exposed to the Pershing uh, at the front. But unfortunately it's not a game you could ever try and win this because you're either going to face one tank or another there on both sides of you. He's bringing it up to the, <laughs> the boundaries. It's a bit micromanagement by Beans at the moment. Oh! And that tank has just become incredibly valuable. Nibelowski now has two Panthers, a Stu and an Ostwin down here. And there's another Tiger on the field. Actually gonna need to drink some juice for a second because... Whew, there's a lot going on. Random Chaos sitting pretty at the moment with a highly vetted airborne squad and the Pershing. That Tiger is going to have to try and micromanage its way around. Another Sherman coming onto the field shortly. He has got a Sherman back here, which is... Seems like a bit of a fire hazard, <coughs> sitting that close to a flaming engine. But uh, Jeff is braving it out on the 50 cal. And what Nibelowski is going to have to try and do as best he can is try and retake this area down here, that Tiger is not going to fare well against that many infantry squads. A sticky bomb coming out from the Rifleman squad from Gator as well. It's got a damage engine, which is quite surprising given how much health I actually thought it would happen later on. Sergeant, get an MG on the roof of this tin can. It's time to shred some crowds. Ooh, well, it wasn't expected. <laughs> well, there we go, 50 cal upgrade going on the Sherman. Tiger against Pershing, this truly is the tank, the ultimate tank, almost the ultimate tank from the Axis besides the King Tiger going up against the ultimate tank of the Allied side, a Panther coming in as quickly as it possibly can to try and get rid of that Pershing, but the Tiger goes down and that Panther is going to find itself isolated, especially if Chaos brings yeah, it forward. And if he is clever, a sticky bomb from the infantry squad and the reinforcement of that airborne squad, the f <laughs> heroically flaming Pershing there. And uh, Nivelowski is trying his very best. He does have an Oswin. Oh, what the hell the Oswin's going to do about it? He's just going to sort of poke little holes inside. Uh, there's another Sherman coming from the rear. There's a shift in momentum. He's going to have to try and bring over his Panther Nivelowski to try and help Beans over on the right hand flank here. Incredibly, that Panther survives. He's going to have to bring it all the way back to the base. He's got another one coming out of the factory at the moment. And Nibelowski, with his two Panthers as well, has just come in the nick of time to try and get rid of these Shermans. Is he going to activate the Allied War Machine? He should have probably done it. Probably has enough to replace that Sherman, though, having looked at the resources. The problem really that uh, the Velocity Beans are having at the moment is they need more anti-infantry and actually this is where the Ostwin, funnily enough, has come into its own. It's uh, pretty effective at actually taking them off, especially against Airborne. And a Calliope barrage which has come from all the way over here. Trying to polish off what remains. And I don't really know which way the momentum, that is a huge amount, that's three Pershings, uh, two are Nibelowski's, one is Beans, you've got a couple of Oswins from Nibelowski as well as another couple of Panthers here. This does look as if this could be the final showdown. I genuinely can't remember, I've been away for the weekend and uh, I uh, played this one before I went away so... I can't really remember. Stu finally taking back with the engineer squad, the middle here, and uh, the territory looking far more even than it did. Two Panthers with a couple of Wehrmacht soldiers popping out the top here. MG42 
ready and waiting with the drum mag, which is a little unusual. And those panthers just going, are they gonna go straight in? I actually can't remember what happens. I can sense the impending uh, tank battle. Huge amount of armor, Jesus. I've forgotten how much was on the field. Is that all beans? Is yes, it is. Three panthers and a tiger. Two panthers, two ostrich. It's like uh, more panthers than a zoo. Against you have a pretty much just a Sherman. He's got the Calliope down here, and he's got uh, his squads, which I'm not too sure where they've got to. He's bringing up his three squads here, not sensing that incoming at the moment. A panther taking a massive hit from the Pershing at the front, and there is something coming up. There's another Sherman coming out there. This is probably the moment. <laughs> Looks as though just two Shermans are going to be taken on the might of the uh, Axis control. That Pershing taking a hell of a huge amount of volley of fire from the Panthers. Uh, AI pathfinding, and this is quite incredible, it has to be said. Main gun destroyed, so it does go down in that Pershing. Has he got enough? He hasn't got enough manpower to bring it back onto the field. Should have really started recycling his tanks then, because he is going to lose those Shermans as well. MG gunner up and firing! Not really sure why that keeps saying that, but fair enough. And that Sherman does look as though, yep, a good game is being thrown down. And the territory at one point all the way in the Axis powers, then all the way in the Allies. So then one fell swoop be taken back, but uh, there's not really any coming back from that amount of Panther tanks. And it is fairly academic from this point onwards, so I am going to speed it up a little bit. The Calliope quite cheekily giving a volley uh, from the rear. There's a few anti-tank guns, three anti-tank guns bring ball forward. So unfortunately, uh, aren't going to have much effect because they are going to be overrun by the Blitzkrieg, that is, the Germans and their Panther tanks. The order's being brought up. <laughs> Yet another Ostwind. And, uh, there we have it, one a company of heroes replay. Everything destroyed in both bases. The Calliope actually managing to tag a panther with its volume. It was lucky he didn't grab another two there as well. Another couple of Ostwins being brought up, but unfortunately towards the end of this game but, uh, we didn't realise was the fact that there was a machine gun emplacement down here. And uh, Shoutcast is... Uh, I'm not really sure, Polaris. It's going well, I think. <laughs> running out of guys and uh, the moment you can see all the tanks moving around the map to try and find this, uh, this one last, I can't speed it up anymore unfortunately but uh, that Calliope <laughs> making a break for it and firing off a huge volley killing yet another panther but uh, that machine gun nest is not going to survive and that is playback over so as always guys, if you have enjoyed the video, and if you want to see more uh, Company of Heroes replays, then uh, say down in the comments. Uh, I am going to start trying to do more Forge Alliance replays uh, again. Um, so I've got a bit of time on my hands now, which is absolutely amazing. Uh, but most importantly at the moment, if you can recommend any games that you want to watch me play through, or a replay, or whatever it might be, uh, just leave a comment down in the section uh, below. But as always, thank you so much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe to the video, I'm sure you've heard it a million times before, and uh, I will see you next time.